them to be focused on how to save civilian lives, not stop going after Hamas, but be more careful. A warning from President Biden for Israel to, quote, be more careful. Right now, the U.S. is urging Israel to end its large-scale ground operations in Gaza and take a more targeted approach. And it comes as National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan visits the West Bank. He'll be there today. At a news conference earlier, he talked about what the U.S. would like to see happen in Gaza after the war is over. The Israeli government has indicated that it does not have a long-term plan to occupy Gaza and that ultimately the control of Gaza, the administration of Gaza and the security of Gaza has to transition to the Palestinian. But the U.S. position on this is clear. We do not believe that it makes sense for Israel or is right for Israel to occupy Gaza, reoccupy Gaza over the long term, and that um, we would like to see ultimately that transition take place. Who governs Gaza once the war is over has been the subject of debate and growing tension between the Biden administration and Israel. Joining us now, Eitan Charnoff, a geopolitical consultant, recently wrote an op-ed about familiar turf that Israel finds itself on. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you say this rift between Biden and Netanyahu may be actually helping the prime minister. H how so? Well, it's really a balancing act, as the U.S. has given Israel since day one unprecedented support in this war, both in terms of arms, international backing, and even the sending of U.S. military to the region to deter Israel's even larger adversaries. However, that also comes with a sort of political price, where the U.S. wants to also dictate for Israel to an extent how this war should go and what the future of Gaza should look like, a reasonable request from a superpower, uh, no doubt. However, we need to understand Bibi's long history as prime minister in Israel. He's really branded himself as King Bibi, this security-minded defender of the country, although his policies on paper really align with most other Israeli politicians in the mainstream, both in opposition and coalition. And he's really used tensions with America over the years around key Israeli security issues to bolster his brand domestically, most notably his 2015 speech to a joint session of U.S. Congress, where he basically shamed President um, Obama at the time and called for no Iranian nuclear deal to be commenced with the United States. This happened to take place just a few days before an Israeli election that he won. Of course, the JCPOA was then signed but Bibi successfully secured his brand among his constituents as this defender of Israel who will stand up to superpowers. So again now, as the U.S., as we just saw, is pushing for PA rule in Gaza post-war, most Israeli politicians are actually against this, at least with the PA in its current form. But Bibi might be using extra antagonistic language vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. to compensate for his brand as a security leader, which was harmed dramatically by the October 7th attacks that took place during his watch. Right. So I hear what you're saying, defender of Israel, right? That's what his supporters have liked so much about him. Then October 7th mm -hmm. happened. Do Israelis blame him for the October 7th attack, for not protecting him? What are they saying? So I'm going to disregard polls for a minute and disregard media press and just speak from my own personal experience. I was actually in Sterot just a few days ago in southern Israel. This was a town devastated by the October 7th attack and a bastion for Bibi's Likud party and other right-wing parties in this coalition. And I spoke just with citizens who are walking the street, literally standing next to a bombed-out car that was still just laying on the side of the road in a destroyed police station that was damaged in gun battles. And... Every citizen I spoke to blamed Bibi Netanyahu, however, went on to say, but he's the only one that will protect us from the Palestinian state that will, could rise in Gaza after this war. Which brings me to the question, the U.S. is pushing for the Palestinian Authority to take over Gaza, a two-state solution. Israel does not want this. Um, why? Well, I think that we can't say blanket statement, Israel doesn't want this. There are many in Israel who are in favor of a two-state solution. And in fact, there are various Likud leaders throughout the years that also grappled with this idea as well. And it's an idea that does have some support from the public and from some politicians. Even if Netanyahu were to want to consider moves towards a two-state solution, he currently cannot because his coalition relies on far-right Israeli parties that are anti-Palestinian state 
in any shape or form and want to see Israeli sovereignty over all of the West Bank. And actually, just today, one of these far-right politicians called for Israeli resettlement of Gaza. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.